my name is Jimmy Reyes and I'm a professional comic book illustrator. Welcome to my channel. Well hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Before this video begins, I would like to make a statement or a disclaimer that this video is not exactly a sponsored video, nor is it exactly a review video. Uh, Ram Studios has provided me with a 25 brush set for free along with three bonus brushes, so 28 brushes in total. Now I'm not going to make a review where I tell you that these are absolutely the greatest brushes in the world and that you absolutely have to have them. I believe in honesty. I would like for you to form your own opinion and decide whether or not these brushes are right for you. Now what I'm going to do to give you a better idea of how these brushes work is that I'm actually going to use the brushes in three different demos and I'm going to show you how they apply to my work and how I use them in my line work. So if you're interested in my line work and you want to have the same brushes that I'm using, uh, the link will be provided down in the description and you can now purchase the same brush set that I use in my work. Uh, so if you do purchase the brush set, uh, this channel will receive a percentage of each individual cell. And so I appreciate uh, the support that if you decide you want to buy the brush set, if not, don't feel obligated. Just by watching this video, you are supporting this channel and that is greatly appreciated. So if you have the time, please give the video a thumbs up and uh, I'm going to stop talking now. Let's get started on the demo and see how these brushes work. Of course, there's no obligation, but if you decide that you want to buy these custom brushes from Ram Studio, you can click the link that's provided in the description and it takes you directly to the website where they can be purchased. 25 custom brushes with three bonus brushes. Now I was an inker uh, that inked traditionally and I used all the tools that you see here in this video. Now I ink digitally using a Wacken and Tools 4 tablet and I ink inside a program called Clip Studio Paint. And this is a sample of what I have done inside Clip Studio Paint. But if you're interested in seeing my published work, uh, my most recent work it can be seen inside Marvel Action Avengers number five and number six. Ram Studios uh, is owned by an artist named Robert Marzullo and uh, Robert teaches different courses and, and things on Clip Studio Paint and he's custom designed these brushes and he sent them to me and uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video um, this channel will receive a percentage of each purchase made from that brush set. Uh, of course there's no obligation and uh, I'm not gonna make this a review or I'm not gonna tell you that these are the greatest brushes and you absolutely have to have them. So what I wanna do is I actually just wanna show how I would use them in my work. And uh, if you feel that uh, you would like to have brushes that, uh, or the same brush set that I'm using uh, in my work, then they can now be purchased using the link in the description. So what I wanna do here is I want to show the brushes used in artwork. Uh, Robert has uh, created a video. Once you click the link in the description, it will then take you to the page where you can purchase the brushes. And on that page, it has a link to show a demo of the brushes where uh, Robert has created a video that shows each individual brush and the texture that it creates or the line work that it creates. What I want to do is, is take that a step further and actually show how I would use it within my work. So I like that background stamp, or stamp background uh, texture, and uh, I, I like using that within the lasso tool and it, it created that uh, textured background that you see there. I also see a nib in there, or a G-pin, um, titled uh, Slick Inker. So of course that gained my attention right away. And with any new brush that you use, it, it, it takes a little adjustment. Um, you have to get used to the way that brush reacts to both your uh, hand weight, hand gesture, and, and the way that you use the brush. At the same time, you have to learn to um, manipulate that brush and control that brush and, and, and adjust to the way that the way that brush is reacting, uh, you know, of course, to your hand gesture. So the great thing about digital inking is that if that line doesn't come out, exactly the way you want it undo it you know you can easily erase or delete and redo right away it's, it's great it's a, a really good advantage you know uh, over traditional inking it's something that you really can't do over traditional or that you can't do with traditional i should say so i'm going to ink the outline around her uh, her hood 
And what I really like about this slick inker, and I'm starting to get the, the hang of it uh, at this point here in the video, is that uh, it gives me angular lines and uh, I can throw what are called bleeds. Um, and the bleeds are the, the feathered line that goes from thick to thin coming out of the black. Uh, so when I throw that line, that, uh, that's called the bleed, and I, I use the bleed to transition from solid black into a gray into white. Now, I, I don't want to give the misconception that you could easily just come in here and, you know, picking up the brush set or, or clip studio paint and that it's going to be an easy way to become a great inker. Uh, the thing is that you, you still have to work at your inking techniques. I was a traditional inker for many years and so uh, transitioning to digital, not only did I have to learn the, the way the tools work within Clip Studio Paint, but I also have to learn things of the, uh, the types of technical things within the program. You know, like PPI, pixels per inch, and uh, you know, different uh, page sizes and, and things like that. Um, so, you know, pixel size and, and things are, are also important when you can digitally, but uh, you also want to bring in a mindset of traditional inking as well, and it's going to sound like a contradictory uh, statement, but um, I've mentioned before in previous video where uh, I believe that, you know, you should ink digitally traditionally, that uh, you should bring in uh, traditional techniques and uh, that you also have on a traditional mindset. You, you do, yes, but what I mean by that is that you also want to take advantage of the uh, things that you can do digitally. Digitally allows you to, as I said, undo, throw the line again, uh, cut into the lines, you know, there's just a uh, particular color in there called transparency. Well, it's the absence of color, it's transparency. I, I mean, uh, I guess they, they named it that because you can see through the you know the artwork and, and, and see your paper underneath I guess but so here's where I grabbed the transparency color and what I did was I filled black around the the lion's mane and then I cut into that traditionally that would be called uh, reverse inking where you actually ink like a negative you ink around the white leaving the white there and you apply the black around that uh, and traditionally you can throw a white line over your black ink but it's never really opaque white so it's it's uh, hard to get a really good solid white. Traditionally, inking digitally, you don't have that problem at all. So even though you're coming in with a mindset of traditional inking, you want to take advantage of the digital features. But you don't want to focus just on the digital features. I've watched uh, a lot of tutorials online so far. Not every tutorial, so I don't want to say that there aren't any good inking videos out there on how to ink digitally in Clip Studio Paint. Because that's not true, I haven't seen every single one uh, out there. But most of that I've seen uh, were fo so focused on the digital techniques and that they were looking for shortcuts and fast ways to do things. Not necessarily looking for what's gonna be the best way to do things. Um, and this is my opinion. I believe that you want to ink digitally and look for the things, not only they're gonna give you shortcuts, but what's gonna give you the best line work, what's gonna give you the best results for the artwork that you're working on. That's why I mentioned, you know, traditionally inking digitally is that you wanna come in and, and, and have those inking techniques that uh, you have when you're inking traditionally. If you've never inked traditionally, um, you can still learn these inking techniques. You can, uh, I do have videos where I demonstrate traditional inking and they can be applied to digital inking with some minor adjustments, of course, um, as you're not actually using those exact same tools, but you do want to learn the techniques and all those inking techniques apply digitally. So you really, no matter what style you're inking in, you really want to focus on inking techniques. You want to make sure that uh, everything is, is in there, not just the clean line work. Um, you know, because now throwing clean lines is so much easier. This particular pen I've noticed here that, that I was using here called Slick Inker, I see why he named it that because you are here Slick Inker. It, it just throws a perfect line and, uh, you know, you, it's really hard to, <laughs> to not throw that perfectly shaped line. Um, 
So you don't want to focus so much on just the clean line work. You also want to focus on making sure that you're providing the best line work for the artwork. Uh, some areas you have to ink thick lines, thin lines. You want to make sure you're putting in textures and uh, things like that and helping uh, the shape of the object. So I'm going to zoom out here so we can see uh, the artwork um, all together. You know, see the line work. Um, and we'll go ahead and remove the pencils uh, layer underneath so we can see uh, what was applied with uh, just those two brushes. Now I'm going to delete everything. What I like to do, and this is an exercise that I did traditionally, um, is that I would take all my tools and any tool that I, I could think of, and if it was artist sponge, if it was an old rag from a t-shirt or tissue paper, you know, newspaper, anything I would take and dip in the ink and experiment with it and see what effect it would give me and where I could apply that in my work. So I'm going to do the same thing here uh, digitally. I'm going to go through some of these brushes here and I see one that's called texture. So what I did was I used the lasso fill tool that comes standard in Cyclip Studio Paint and I created the shape of a, a tree um, bark, you know, or the, the trunk of the tree and uh, kind of like a silhouette. So what I, I like to do is I like to go through and play with the brushes and just see what kind of picture I can paint with it. Uh, not only is it a good exercise to learn what effect each brush and tool gives you and how you can apply it, it also gives you uh, a way to exercise your mind's eye so that you learn to see black and white. You learn to paint with just black ink and uh, gives, it's a great way to, to learn reverse inking. It's a great way to use white effects and, and things to, you know, through the absence of color. It's a, it's a really great way to do it. Now, there are uh, ways to use uh, an inking technique called uh, an ink wash to create different grades and stuff like that. That's not very common within um, most uh, comic book art styles. So I'm going to focus here on, on solid black and white. And I'm going to use the brush here uh, again from the, uh, the Slick Inker brush. It makes uh, really good grass blades. Um, traditionally, I would have used the uh, Kalinsky Sable um, that I, I enjoy using, which is a Raphael 8404 brush. But here, uh, I've noticed that the Kalinsky Sable um, the line work that can be recreated uh, with using this Slick Inker um, or something very similar to it. And, I, I really like it, so I'm creating these grass blades and, of course, using the uh, transparency as I mentioned before and uh, cutting into it and creating uh, different um, effects. And as I mentioned before, that you can use an ink wash to create uh, different gray tones and uh, within comic book art style, it's been used to create smoke or clouds in the background that helps push the artwork in the background. But uh, not every penciler likes that style. So I want to train my eye to learn how to work with black and white. The same way that uh, a colorist would, would learn to work with all the different colors and different uh, brushes and different textures and different ways to get effects out of that and mixing colors and things like that. Well, we're doing that with ink. We're going to have fun and play with the brushes. And what I recommend is to take all these different brushes and just have fun. If you're having fun, you're going to be very creative. You're going to enjoy what you're doing. And so you want to go through and just not worry at all about creating a masterpiece. Just experiment. See what effect each brush gives you, what type of line work it gives you, and then challenge yourself to create something from that line work or that particular texture effect. So here with this brush that I see is called a thick brush. Uh, are fatty or something and so the brush um, to me it looked like I could create like shallow water or swamp water that was underneath the tree or maybe it's the river by there and I kind of do these little zigzag lines and just kind of have fun with it and, and the more you play with it uh, you know the things can happen by accident and, and it's gonna be a, sometimes it's a happy accident you go oh wow this is I don't, I don't know how I did that line work that's great and then you know, you go back and you try to recreate it, and, and then you uh, reverse engineer that, you know, that uh, particular technique, and then you've developed your own technique. You go, oh, I learn how to do this, learn how to do that. And and for me, right now, digital inking is so new uh, for comic books, especially the particular slick style that I'm working in, where 
I'm working in a particular style of uh, Sandra Hope or Tim Townsend or Scott Williams. I'm doing that digitally. Um, so a lot of it hasn't really been done. So I'm designing and developing my own techniques on how to create or recreate that line work digitally. So, and this is how I'm doing it. I'm, I'm actually uh, just going in really and experimenting and just trying everything out, trying different lines and different tools, even though the particular brush might be labeled one thing, I can use it for something else. I don't uh, always use what it's uh, labeled for. To me, that limits the, the uh, you know, your, your artistic abilities. Um, so I, I like to go through an experiment. I'm scrolling through the library here and trying to uh, figure out what uh, brush to use next. And uh, Also, the Eclipse Studio Paint also saves, so uh, I have it on auto save. So I saw this one particular brush there that was, um, I think it was straight up or something. I forget what the brush was titled. Uh, and so when I threw that line, I was so shocked that it, uh, it looked like a pine tree. And uh, it looks like something Dr. Seuss would have designed. You know, this, I mean, it, I think the brush should be titled Dr. Seuss, <laughs> you know, tree brush or something, I don't know. But it uh, looked like a pine tree, so I said, hey, I'm going to create like a little pine forest behind this tree, you know. And I'm not worried about it being, uh, as I said, like a, a masterpiece. I'm just having fun, you know. Um, just doing the, the Bob Ross, you know, happy tree thing. And, and uh, or actually, I'm happy while I'm creating these trees. I don't know if the trees are happy, but I'm having fun with it. So I, I noticed one, it was a, a texture effect, and I tried to create like a um, sort of a fog behind there. And I thought, no, I'm going to fill it with a lasso fill and create some type of ground on there. And, uh, you know, create the horizon uh, there. And we're going to go through and... and use the, uh, the slick inker and uh, the slick inker nib and the transparency uh, I keep wanting to say transparency color but I'm not sure if that's correct but that's the color I'm, I'm picking there is a transparency option so I'm cutting back into the black ink and as I mentioned before it's just great I, I love the fact that you can now do that digitally so <laughs> uh, I've learned to uh, ink the black and cut into it in the, in the white because that gives me a nice clean line work where if I try to create that with just the black and do reverse inking it doesn't quite give me as clean of a line uh, digitally as it would if I were to cut back into it using the transparency so that's the, one of the little techniques uh, that I've uh, developed while working div uh, digitally and I'm sharing that with you now and, and as you go through a new experiment you, if you purchase these brushes uh, you're going to have all the brushes that, that I have and uh, will then be able to do the exact same thing and you may develop new techniques that I haven't even thought of. Um, so, uh, you know, if you guys do purchase the brushes, you know, please uh, feel free to post any uh, comments about them in, in the comment section or links to your artwork uh, that you've created in it or if you create a video using those brushes. Uh, the brush set, I'd love to see what uh, your techniques are. And, uh, what you've developed and, and how you, you use these, um, this brush set. Now in the background, I'm just trying to fill the, the background for the sky and I'm, I'm using, uh, I believe it was like a crackle brush and I just filled it in black and then I go over it with the uh, transparency and cut into it and kind of soften up around it. And there's different types of brushes. He's got one here titled Brick. And so it, it's supposed to be used to create brick effects, but then I've noticed that if I were to stamp and change the angle, stamping it, that it'll create a cross-hatching effect. And I thought, wow, this is really neat. So it's an example of how you don't have to use it what, exactly what it's labeled for. Then he has one in here called smoke or clouds. And the smoke uh, gave me the zigzag lines that I was able to soften up that black background. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete all that. And I'm going to give an, uh, a demonstration of how you can use this brush set and uh, start off with a pencil drawing and then take it all the way to uh, inking. Now for those of you, and there's many of you out there that are digital artists and you guys are, uh, are much more advanced than I am uh, as digital artists, uh, where I'm, I'm more focused on the uh, digital inking. So I'm not as comfortable penciling yet. Um, 
with, uh, digitally. I still do mine traditionally and then scan it in and ink it digitally. But uh, for those of you that, that can pencil, you know, if you guys have any tips, advice, or anything like that, uh, feel free to show them in the comments. So when I pencil uh, inside Clip Studio Paint, uh, I pencil on one layer, then I create a second layer and either tighten up the pencils on that second layer and then create a third layer and actually put the ink on top on that third layer. For this demonstration, I'm going to do it all in one layer just because I don't want to make the video any longer than it is. It's already 30 minutes. So um, I don't want to make an extremely long video. But uh, I am going to pencil uh, Ghost Rider. And the reason I decided to pencil Ghost Rider is that there is a brush in here titled Chains. And I thought, you know, I want to see what that does. What I've never seen a brush that uh, creates the, the chain effect. So I thought of Spawn and I thought of Ghost Rider. Um, but I started drawing Ghost Rider. Uh, he's one of my favorite characters. And, uh, my favorite Ghost Rider, of course, is the Johnny Blaze uh, Ghost Rider. Uh, even though the new one is Robbie Reyes, which uh, Reyes is my last name. <laughs> So I like to support that character as well, and I do like that he's driving a muscle car, but uh, since this was a Ghost Rider that I, I grew up with, um, it's the one that comes to mind first. So I'm going to pencil Ghost Rider real loosely, grabbing the chain brush. Uh, I'm just going to throw some chains over, and I noticed that very quickly that if you can uh, vary your uh, pressure um, on your pen, and that this brush is pressure sensitive so that uh, it'll give you thin and thick uh, chains and I thought wow that's great for perspective so I can make the chains look as if they're coming out at the camera and that creates more uh, the effect of movement creates more action and uh, makes your drawing look less static you never want to draw your character with his hands down on his side you always want to draw your character and pose in some way where his hands are moving some way so that the uh, character doesn't look stagnant, it doesn't look stiff, and it creates the illusion of movement and weight. So I remember earlier that uh, I used the smoke effect, uh, a brush smoke effect, and I used it for the clouds uh, earlier above the tree. Now I'm going to use that to create the effect of smoke or flame coming off the top of Ghost Rider's head. And I noticed that depending on the direction that you throw your line is uh, going to depend on which direction your uh, effect is going to come out for the smoke or for the clouds. And I use both different brushes here, the smoke and the cloud one, uh, on top of each other. And as I mentioned before, I, I really like using the, uh, the transparency <laughs> each, almost each and every time. It helps soften up my line. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp in some uh, textures and then I'm going to cut into them to soften them up. It's really the same thing that I would do when I was working uh, traditionally is that I would use um, an artist sponge and I would stamp in some black lines and then I would stamp in some uh, white, uh, opaque, white Indian ink on top of it to uh, soften up the lines. And uh, so here digitally I can cut in using those uh, Kirby crackles or crackles I think is what they were called for the brush. I can cut into it and uh, where the, 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 the highest temperature for Ghost Rider's flame on his head is going to be in white. The color is going to be light. And so you want to leave room for a colorist. And the area where it is starting to cool off or where the smoke is coming uh, off of the flame is going to be darker since it's a burning flame. It's going to create black smoke. And that's the reason for that effect uh, on Ghost Rider's head and the reason why it's uh, white in the middle. Almost like Ghost Rider's going bald on top, like he's got less flame right on the top of his head. <laughs> but it's actually the opposite, he's got more flame on the top of his head. And that's why that's uh, less, less black ink on there. And one of the other tools that I use often in this uh, demonstration is that uh, it's called a lasso fill. And the, the lasso fill is uh, something that's standard inside Clip Studio Paint. and uh, you make a selection and instantly it fills. Uh, there's different options. Uh, you can use your lasso tool and then Clip Studio Paint will pop up a menu, a sub menu. And uh, in that menu, you can click the um, fill bucket. And if your color is selected on black, 
when you click that fill bucket, it acts like the lasso fill. It'll automatically fill that color, but then it still leaves the uh, lasso selection around it and you have to deselect. So the lasso fill tool is a step faster. And so what I'm gonna do is just fill in my blacks that way. So when I'm spotting black, I spot black now with the lasso fill tool. And uh, I, I can make a video if you guys like. Um, it's very easy. Um, it may not even actually require a video uh, to do so. But when you spot your black, that, that's my um, advice that I, I would use is that lasso fill tool. It's very fast, very quick. And so I'm creating the, the darker shades since uh, Ghost Rider wears um, black leather jacket. And uh, with this lasso fill tool, I can fill that in right away. And as I mentioned before, I borrow from Dave Finch's art style, his rendering. And also there's an artist long before Dave, which is uh, Rudy Nebra. If you've never seen Rudy Nebra's work, he worked on Vampirella and Conan. Uh, he's inked guys like John Buscema and stuff. And, uh, just an amazing artist. And he also does these bleeds. And uh, that may or may not have been where other artists have gotten that from, such as Mark Silvestri, who did that for a while too. Uh, but that pen, that particular nib that's called Slick Inker, works great for that. You know, I, I use it to create the black bleeds and then I use it to create the same art style and the same angular lines within the jacket, you know, the highlighted areas. So I'm going to go through and, and still uh, add a little more line work um, using that pen. I, I really like it. It's, a, it's great for my art style. And so I just uh, add in some more of the, the rendering. And, and the rendering helps add the textures and things like that on, onto your illustration. And, and the fun thing too, another fun experiment is to just draw with pen and ink. That's, that's a lot of fun as well because it helps develop your inking uh, ability because when you're inking over a different artist, you're, you're not really going to um, changes drawing by adding a drawing on top, but you still draw on top of his drawing. There's times where you have to tighten up some of the pencils or add some things in there or help clarify some things. And so if you're used to drawing and uh, <clears throat> with uh, ink, then it's going to be much easier for you. So if you've developed your ability and uh, confidence to draw with, with pen and ink, then uh, you feel much more confident and, and it makes you a stronger inker. And really, to be honest, I mean, you should be, uh, as a digital inker, you should be much more adventurous, much more, uh, you know, willing to take risk because uh, the option to undo uh, is something that we didn't have traditionally. So, or it wasn't, we weren't able to do it as easily, but digitally you can. So, you know, really just go in there and experiment, you know, and just try different things, different line work. See what works, see what doesn't work. The sample I gave at the very beginning over Jim Lee's uh, artwork, um, that's something that I'm making for my portfolio to demonstrate and show uh, what I can do digitally. You know, I really want to push uh, the um, standards of uh, digital inking. You know, I, I want to push it as far as I can and, and really show how clean that line work can get and, and uh, all the different type of line quality, you know, can be done digitally, different textures. Uh, and effects and things like that. So what I did um, while I'm working with that is I experimented a lot. I, I threw a lot of different lines that I, I wouldn't have done traditionally. And traditionally I would have been much more safely, but uh, I took a lot of risk and um, could uh, undo that. And then uh, found and developed different techniques and found different line works, uh, line, uh, you know, line work that works for uh, that illustration. Uh, because I, I am inking a lot in the style of Scott Williams, but I don't want to be a Scott Williams cookie cutter inker. And that's not an insult at all to Scott Williams. Scott Williams is, is an amazing inker. He's actually my favorite inker. And I've got a chance to talk to him a, a little bit, and, and he's a nice guy. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if I can ever reach his level. I mean, he's, you know, he's got so, so many, I mean, 30 years inking experience, and he's just an incredible inker. But at the same time, I want to be my own inker, and I, I think that each one of you should be your own inker. You know, you don't have to ink like Scott Williams. You don't have to ink like Jimmy Reyes. <laughs> you know, you can be be you know the best you, uh, because the comic book industry doesn't have a you in it. If 
you haven't um, worked yet in comic books, well, give us a fresh, new, uh, you know, style. Give us something, bring something new, you know, to the table. You know, not the same old uh, techniques and style because then the comic book industry becomes stagnant that way and boring. We want to keep pushing it and, and making it interesting. And that's something that I feel that I'm doing. I, I feel that I'm bringing something new to inking. I, I feel that I'm being, uh, that I'm a part of the, the comic book inking evolution that uh, it is now evolving into the digital phase and I feel that uh, I'm excited and, and get to be a part of that and uh, so far uh, I, I haven't run across or met anyone else inking in Clip Studio Paint that, that's uh, specifically an inker inking in my style. Um, there is a professional illustrator um, and it's uh, Vic Bogdanovic, uh, or Victor Bogdanovic. He's uh, an illustrator out of Germany, and he's actually the guy that I've been talking to. Uh, uh, and he's really nice, a uh, really nice guy. And uh, he was inking in Photoshop, he would ink his own work. And he was the first guy that uh, I saw ink traditionally. Uh, I'm sorry, he inked digitally, made it look traditionally, and he did it in Photoshop. And I went, wow, that's just incredible. And I tried to recreate that in Photoshop, couldn't do it. But I found Clip Studio Paint and it works for me. So uh, using these 25 different brushes, I'm able to create different effects. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you do feel uh, that you wanna purchase these brushes, it's appreciated. And uh, again, I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter.